It is uh, my honor again to introduce uh, a great. Always the same person. guy. It is always, always the same on this guy with the same, same topics. Give it up for links and uh, privacy scalable in the GNU net. And something like that. Uh, it's, yeah, scalability. So, um, scalable and privacy respectful distributed systems. Uh, which I think is actually our only chance that we have to escape the cloud computing uh, principle. So why do I believe that? Let's have a look. So um, federated systems, uh, uh, decentralized systems usually try to connect each other, all of them, all the time, like full, so-called full mesh round robin. Um, so um, I had a chat with a Matrix developer uh, a few weeks ago, and he said Matrix currently uh, connects each server directly and uh, sends all, uh, makes all the exchanges directly. And um, the internet has become very broad in bandwidth. It has become very fast. Computers have, been, uh, have become uh, very powerful. So uh, for uh, even the Matrix system as big as it is now, it's still not running into performance problems. So that's good news. But it's just kind of postponing the problem because the architecture as such uh, typically doesn't scale well. And if you try to have uh, billions of people on it, like with Twitter or Facebook, then it's unlikely to work out this way. So um, as soon as you have large numbers, then you would start having less and less servers. So uh, people would always try to find the, the server that works uh, reliably, that is uh, working all the time, while other servers are crashing. And so more and more people would start centralizing the servers and find themselves on a Google server or on a Facebook server. And then you kind of at essentially lost the game again, like it happened for email. We all ended up on Gmail, not all of us. I, I don't have a Gmail account, but a lot of us. And um, a lot of us ended up on Facebook. So, um, uh, well, in the case of Jabber, there was a period when everyone was ending up uh, on, on Google. Now everyone is ending on CCC, uh, unless they can no longer get an account there. But the, the, the pattern is always the same. Each time we start a federated uh, system, it actually ends up be, being controlled by a, a big player later. So um, <coughs> the old uh, legend of federation, which is like decades old, it actually never really worked out. And still, for the users, it's a problem. Which server should I actually choose? Who can I trust? And even if I have my, my server in a safe place um, in, at, in ho at home, uh, how would others, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Or if I uh, rent a server on a virtual machine, it's really cheap, but it can be uh, observed and monitored, so it, it is not a, a, a safe choice against surveillance, uh, especially nowadays uh, when uh, the AMT stack can be attacked from any hacked Cisco router. So uh, there's um, very hard to set up a server that cannot be accessed by the NSA these days. And uh, why is it working so well for the other ones? Well, they have this cloud, and we just talk to the cloud, and the cloud is, is always uh, very performant. So how does cloud computing actually do it? Well, in fact, cloud computing does a, a kind of distribution trees as well. You can call it database replication. Well, that, well, that was like 10 years ago when people would actually use databases and replicate databases and have caching and all of that. Nowadays, uh, cloud computing actually uses push technology and pushes all the database changes to all the nodes that need to know. So um, it's actually using a multicast uh, strategy. But it's a simplified strategy because it, it, all the nodes are owned by the same company. There's no complexity about who's, who's, who's allowed to get which kind of data. There's no encryption. You can simplify a lot. And uh, whereas uh, in a distributed system, we actually need to do the ki same kind of architecture and just add the little bit of extra 
to be on the safe side for privacy. <clears throat> so um, the essence to solve the scalability challenge is to build multicast trees. It's actually a very old knowledge because we used to have it with IRC, we used to have it with NNTP, and uh, we have it in tor tools like BitTorrent, kind of, similar. And uh, instead, uh, all the newer federated systems, they are not doing this anymore. Like Jabber ignored the problem. Uh, Matrix isn't dealing with it because it's not a problem yet. Uh, Psyche used to do multicast. Um, but Psyche is this protocol up here. But um, we later realized that uh, the federated architecture would still keep us from providing the kind of privacy and security that we want. We were still using the, the certificate, certification system, uh, uh, the existing one, the TLS. And, and there were so many loopholes that could that, uh, that would break uh, privacy, especially the metadata protection is, is hard to achieve in a federated system where you just talk to your own server and then you don't know what happens behind that. Is it really going to arrive uh, at the other, on a different server in a protected way? Who knows? And there are so many ways to attack the communication between servers. So, um, so we prefer to do a distributed system where the servers in between do not even know what they are doing. And uh, we found uh, that actually an anonymous multicast can be implemented. There has been research, I'll mention the paper names, and uh, that the social graph can be used, the social graph among people who is gonna knows who can be used to protect against the kind of civil attacks. We already have civil attack protection in GNUnet uh, for because of the network size estimation strategy and we can additionally use uh, secure share social graph for additional protection and uh, we can also uh, use have a different multiple strategies for onion routing using using the social graph but getting back to the actual papers so uh, in 98 there was already a paper that suggested how to do multicast uh, trees and maintain uh, anonymity. Um, in 2003, uh, we had an actual implementation, which unfortunately is only available on request, um, and I didn't make the request, so I don't know. And uh, this one is particularly promising. Uh, I think uh, uh, GNUnet is actually looking into the, this one for implementation. So we're, we're actually looking at this work, uh, GNUnet is not reinventing wheels. The essence of secure sharing GNUnet is look at the best ideas that the world has invented and then get it in, in there. So uh, that might be uh, something that will get implemented in the coming years. So um, what are the typical problems if you do a, a distribution strategy? Well, you can uh, you could be doing uh, one which with high latency, and actually IPFS kind of does it, Freenet does it, um, and even GNUnet itself with its uh, file sharing or file system module uh, does exactly that. But high latency is something that doesn't always make fun. So a lot of applications like to have, uh, like in particular Twitter, is not fun if the Twitter message arrives an hour late. Um, you want, uh, if you have uh, a billion subscribers at a tw uh, of a Twitter stream, you still want to get it in real time. You might ask, but why are we doing Twitter uh, on an an anonymity technology? Because the fact that you're interested in Christopher Bieber's uh, uh, tweets should be private. That's, that's what we believe in. Yes, Christopher, uh, whoever, any large personality will tweet to a lot of people and it might be visible how many roughly how many people are interested in somebody's tweets but still each one of them has a privacy to keep it secret that they're actually uh, subscribing to Sasha Gray as well um, so <clears throat> so um, high latency is not a solution to our problems 
Uh, another problem with uh, most of these tools is they're, n they're not protecting anonymity. So that's that's uh, secure Scuttlebot is really interesting if you have uh, have heard of it. It's a distributed Twitter replacement, and it's pretty uh, advanced in many ways. But it will not protect uh, the your metadata, who you're interested in, who you're communicating with, and even if you're having an encrypted conversation, uh, everybody can see that you're having an encrypted uh, conversation. And that would be similar with other tools if we were doing a distributed Twitter using other tools like ZeroMQ. And uh, another possibility is to use existing uh, uh, anonymization technology. So uh, somebody did a Twitter-like clone uh, over I2P. That was like five years ago or six years ago, and it died. The project has disappeared, and it's not happening. Um, also, the idea of, of doing BitTorrent over I2P, which would be a proof of, of concept. Well, some people are kind of using it. It's not forbidden, but it didn't really break through. Like, it's not like we are all suddenly using I2P and doing BitTorrent because it works so well. So something didn't really work out. I guess it's the scalability, because if the anonymization layer is on top of the scalability, then the scalability actually doesn't work. So uh, what we have is the, the choice of, of trade-off. So are we going to accept high latency? Or are we uh, uh, going to accept that it's going to take a lot of bandwidth? Or are we going to accept that we're not getting anonymity? Uh, we actually don't, wouldn't like to have, a, to have to choose. So uh, the multicast layer that we would like to have in GNU-NET would uh, combine different methods, would learn from the best uh, ideas to make it a pluggable system that you can choose the kind of properties that you need for your application. Similar to what we said before in the previous presentation about the anonymization strategies. So you can combine different anonymization strategies with different uh, scalability properties. And we can have use cases from very private chat rooms to super popular uh, uh, Twitter kind of uh, feeds. So if you're still interested, then I'll uh, add a few slides uh, regarding SecuShare, which is using or is, would be using the, the multicast layer in the long run for uh, high, high scalability, uh, uh, high popularity um, feeds. Uh, we're using the good old Psyc protocol in a refurbished and uh, renewed v way for uh, some reasons uh, that, the old, that actually in the meantime we haven't found any syntax or protocol which is actually more efficient in the characteristics that we're looking for. If, you're, if you want a binary protocol, then there are binary protocols which are just slightly more efficient than Psyc, just slightly. But uh, if you actually want an extensible uh, protocol which has rich semantics in a almost XML kind of style and you want it to be still text-based and have the advantages of a text protocol, then Psyc is pretty smart because it's at least four times faster than XML or JSON. It's actually, in most cases, a lot more faster. It's still text-based. Uh, it's actually friendly for text templates which means you don't have, always have to create the text that you're going to send. You can just use a pre-formatted uh, string and just fill in the data if you know that the data is not going to break the protocol. And um, so uh, other protocols uh, can be, uh, at least the binary ones like Seabor can be close, but they, are not, they don't have these friendly properties. Here's a comparison of, uh, of speed. And the small numbers are in milliseconds are how speed, uh, how fast uh, the the implementation is, and um, you can see that uh, the libpsych is uh, is the C implementation of the psych syntax, and uh, you can see that libpsych uh, is extremely fast on uh, different kind of uh, use cases, whereas J JSON is uh, a lot slower. And XML is usually even more slower. But actually, it depends a lot on what kind of use case and what kind of data structure you're, you're delivering. Still, um, yeah. So uh, 
we still don't understand why the world isn't using Psyche for all kinds of things because Psyche is actually a very efficient syntax. Um, this is this is what a Psyche message looks like when it's not compacted, which means um, the underscore um, uh, keyword can be compacted to a single uh, single letter. So it is almost as compact as a binary protocol, but it has many of the advantages of uh, text protocols because you can extend the semantics of each uh, of each um, element by adding an extra underscore something, and you can do it as you need it in your uh, implementation. So. Um, yeah, this is a typical way. Uh, on the top, uh, it would include the, the public key of a GNUnet node. It can uh, send to a c certain target on, on that, um, not in a GNUnet node, on a, on a GNUnet ego. So a per, uh, an identity, a person. So you send a message to a person. You can specify what kind of context uh, this message is in. Uh, you send a text body or uh, uh, can be a binary body. You can deliver a... a a binary uh, image, for example, as a parameter, and you can also include a, um, a state modification, which in this case says, I have become a fan of the Shitty Beatles, uh, in case you have ever heard of the Shitty Beatles, a famous band from uh, Wayne's World. Um, so, it, uh, SecureShare essentially uses a lot of uh, publish, subscribe, uh, um, subscriptions for all kinds of people. We discussed that in a previous talk about uh, the modeling of, of uh, secu um, the social modeling of, of SecureShare. Um, so the the useful thing about that is uh, we get uh, we we have a personalized collection of of subscription, and that gives us a personalized view of our social network and of, of the profile of the people that we're looking at. So uh, my mother sees a different profile of me than uh, a person that I met on the street or an old friend. And uh, it's probably safer that way. It's actually socially more uh, relevant because uh, that's how social interaction works. People have different views of each other. So it's more advanced than uh, the the plain uh, Facebook approach. And that alone uh, gives you a whole choice of applications that could be done, not just secure uh, social networking, but all kinds of podcasts and, and dynamic websites that are, that are pushed to you instead of you fetching them. Um, mailing list, groupware, uh, editing, all kinds of things. And uh, it, it and the fact that you have a social graph, you can always, each tool that you use, you're using it with people, not with IP numbers, not with uh, profiles on, a whole, on, on some server uh, in a cloud. You're doing it with people. Um, details. And uh, five years ago, I made these nice, uh, funny slides uh, suggesting which uh, kind of tools we would be replacing. So if in the basic elementary secure share level, if we manage to get GNU working and we have basic messaging happening between people, then we're already attacking the business models of ICQ. Okay, these days you would say WhatsApp and Signal and uh, Gmail and Hotmail and, and file sharing tools like that. And uh, as soon as we have uh, advanced social graph modeling, then we're attacking all the, the social graph institutions uh, well, we have some old-fashioned ones here in this listing. And actually, since media transfer is, is already not a problem, uh, then w we would also be attacking uh, the YouTube uh, business model or SoundCloud. It gets interesting when we start doing applications on top of distributed social networking. Uh, right, You can see in, in only five years, these slides have become really old because now you would see Uber and Airbnb, <laughs> and uh, they didn't exist back then. <laughs> but still, yeah, these are the kind of things that one could do as a plugin, 
And then the question is, do we like proprietary plugins? No, we want free software plugins. So all these applications would actually be free software applications for free people that get to find a couch, sleeping on a couch at a friend's place, or find, find, uh, find a friend of a friend that is going to drive you uh, through town for a few euros, or uh, things like that. So uh, we can implement things like Airbnb and Uber without having actual centralized capitalism in it. And it goes on if you allow for sharing the location, for example, then you can do applications where people find out that they are in the same city and maybe they find out they are in the same uh, street and so they can meet. Uh, things that we could be doing and everyone is free to decide for themselves how much privacy they need to hide from their own friends, which is completely different from the privacy discourse that we have regarding uh, centralized uh, cap um, corpor corporate capitalism and, uh, and governments. So that, that would be quite exciting to attack all those business models. I even added Oracle because I think a lot of SQL databases make no sense once we have a platform like this. So thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? Let's go ahead. How will you, how will you finance? How will you finance developing all that? You're gonna attack business models which generate billions of dollars in revenue. So you could get some of those dollars. Well, um, we think uh, there are other business models which uh, are uh, legitimate and ethical. And the ones uh, that are centralized are actually not ethical. And so uh, we are happy to uh, uh, invite idealists who see it the same way to produce uh, solutions that r run this way. And also we are suggesting to uh, politicians, to political parties, to the European Commission, we are suggesting that that business model should actually not even be legal. And that's why a whole dimension of other business models would actually get established the moment that the other one is actually not an option. Any more questions? Yeah, so uh, what's like... Can you hear me? No, no, it's just that uh, orientation of the... Okay. Um, so what's like the easiest app or like uh, to bootstrap the network, to bootstrap the, the peer numbers? Like uh, is there like a killer app that we could uh, focus on, like a chat or like an easy app to bootstrap the network? Um, I actually don't know because as soon as we fix the last bugs from GNUnet that are blocking exactly that step, uh, then anybody who can uh, write up uh, a Python script or a shell script using the GNUnet uh, command line tools can already be doing tools that are extremely useful for other people. And it's really not a big step to do a user interface or to... So uh, a lot of uh, amazing applications are just a small step away. We just need the, to, to figure out what's going wrong in GNUnet or it has been going wrong until now. Maybe it's I fixed, maybe we'll find out next week. So actually next week we'll, uh, we hope that we'll take that step and, and have basic applications on GNUnet running. And then anybody uh, who's sitting here could be doing a killer application that might be doing big stuff. We have plans to provide for a Facebook replacement that is easier to use than Facebook, that is nicer than Facebook, and it's ethically viable. Okay then, my question, sir.
Yeah, go ahead. Give me your questions. Um, let's get technical for, for, for a little while. I would like to have a look at the Psyche uh, syntax again. Why, why this syntax? Why not others? XML, JSON, RDF? Well, the answer <laughs> RDF is XML, right? <laughs> uh, so the answer regarding XML and JSON, uh, you can see it here in the numbers. Uh, it, it, it's just, I mean, we're thinking about running these things on Raspberry Pis and, and all kinds of equipment on old smartphones. So um, I, I wouldn't want to lose power and energy for something uh, unnecessary. And since we're reinventing the whole thing anyway, why be compatible to a past that didn't satisfy certain requirements? So it, there have been historic mistakes in the way XML has been designed in 98. There have been historic mistakes in, uh, in how XMPP was done. And, uh, and the idea of just escaping to JSON was kind of like practical, but uh, a JavaScript notation syntax is not exactly uh, optimized for performance. In fact, all the escaping and all the, you, you have so many special characters that you have to make sure that not, uh, do not appear in the data before you can send the data. Right? Or you have to escape it with backslashes and all that. Or you have to encode it with a base64 encoding. So all of that uh, appears in those numbers. So as soon as something complicated happens, you have an overhead that, uh, that you have to pay for. I understand that all the IoT, de IoT developers right now do not care because they just want to be fast to the market. And so they are even agreeing on standards like that. But we are doing something completely fresh. We don't have to oblige to anybody else. So we can pick something that is actually more efficient. Uh, last question. Um, you said um, the revolution is going to... Oh, there's one. But let me go first, please. <laughs> you said the revolution is going to uh, start next week when the last um, bug is fixed from the GNU net. Uh, that's my hope now. Okay. Uh, where will you televise the revolution? Where, how how do, we, do we stay up to date? Uh, it's, it's happening at the Onion Space in Berlin uh, from 2nd to 9th of January. Especially on the weekend, we'll, have, we'll focus on the things uh, on the weekend. And, uh, and whatever happens there, we'll, uh, we'll publish it on secureshare.org. We'll probably also have something on grunet.org. And uh, we have mailing lists, we have uh, other kinds of channels uh, to, to follow for now. And uh, soon, uh, hopefully, you can subscribe uh, to the news that is happening on SecureShare using SecureShare. Or at least a, a GNU-Net tool that kind of uses the PubSub principle. Cool. Uh, is there a point on the roadmap where um, I can reach um, a GNU-Net application from my actively running JavaScript in my browser tab somehow? Or is there a model for that? Do um, uh, uh, Christian mentioned it before that uh, that RESTful APIs are being done for several of the modules. So several of the modules where you might find it reasonable. <laughs> I, I'm still critical about these approaches, but where you might find it reasonable to have a JavaScript application run in the browser and uh, do. Uh, um, do interaction with the um, uh, servers, then you can use RESTful APIs and do exactly that. So for other people that love to uh, work in that direction, they can quickly hack something up and uh, using that method. So it also probably something that uh, a lot of smartphone applications would be doing because that's the way they work. Thin clients. It's not like RESTful HTTP is actually very efficient, but it's on a level that I, I understand that we're talking about a level of efficiency that for most people uh, is no longer important. But, yeah. Um, back again to Psyche. I haven't never heard about the protocol. So, um, since when, when started the development? Uh, Psyche, uh, the, there was a binary Psyche pro prototype in 94. And then in 95, uh, the first uh, version of the syntax was defined, and there was an implementation which uh, was, um, yeah. Um, and is there also an RFC? 
Uh, no, there are the specifications on the Psyc website, and and it never became an RFC, and uh, the ITF decided to make XMPP a standard, and kind of didn't make sense to also, I, I didn't follow up and nobody else did, so. Maybe it's just a marketing problem. Yeah, could be. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the, we did the statistics much later uh, the, to find out that it's actually the, a, a good uh, syntax, we only found out later. So we didn't know at the time. Okay, thank you. Just yeah. a sec. Um, is there any translation from the psych syntax into the into something more readable like JSON or XML or something, so that we can understand which data structure you're trying to? Yeah, to. Uh, it's pretty simple to do conversion tools. Uh, I'm not sure if we actually have any, but. Uh, you can use libpsych and just drop the same thing into a JSON library or uh, we actually, the, that's how the benchmarks have been done. They, they were converted. Um, so it's not difficult. And, uh, but ironically, uh, if you get used to psych, it's much more readable than JSON or XML actually. Because <laughs> uh, uh, JSON is a lot more verbose and XML even more. So yeah, so you have, you, you need to parse more with your eyes. Would it be possible to, to share all the data there is? Files, texts, movies? Well, for binary data, it's not always useful. I mean, Psyche can uh, have a, a trivial binary transfer by saying the next uh, eight megabytes, uh, et cetera, are binary data, and then you send binary data. Is so it that easy? It's just like HTTP. I mean, we. Uh, when Psyche was designed, it looked at the advantages of, of SMTP, of RFC 822, and the advantages of HTTP. It learned from all the good ideas in there, and then it tried to go beyond, and, and the things that we added to Psyche, we didn't think that it was so spectacularly new. Or, I mean, we just logically tried to make a syntax that can do a few things more. And for some reason, in, in the following 20 years, nobody did the same. Okay, then um, one last question from my side. You know, I always have a last question. Excellent. Um, so you have a radical approach on the syntax. I understood that. That's pretty cool, and the numbers show it. Um, you're radical on the unicast versus multicast issue. Is there even a third thing that you can say it's going to be amazing because we are reinventing, no, not reinventing, but learning from all the mistakes in the last 20 years? Okay, scalability. Uh, um, yeah, I, I guess uh, the way we combine uh, anonymity uh, technologies and, and, and encryption uh, will make it should make it quite amazing once we actually have the implementation. So the early versions of Secure Shell will be un, un not not specifiable if it's safer than Tor. Like you can, it's like comparing apples and pears. Like uh, GNUnet already, if uh, if a large number of GNUnet nodes is running and it's using non-deterministic routing and stuff. Uh, it's not trivial to say that it's uh, less secure than uh, Tor's onion routing or more secure. We don't know. That would take research to find out. And if we later even add onion routing, then it's pretty obvious that it's going to be more secure. Um, yeah, even more things. Um, let me think. Um, 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 um. Uh, can Luigi, so tell me something that that okay um, okay I, I yeah, it, it doesn't right now it doesn't come to my head but actually it's it's a lot of stuff actually where, where are you sitting during the congress where's the assembly it's right around the corner we have a secure share table close to chaos west but also um, the GNUnet <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you uh, <laughs> the GNUnet people uh, they are uh, have a table in the Wau Holland next to the Wau Holland Stiftung. It's very quiet there. It's uh, kind of 
I'm, I think tomorrow we'll probably be hanging out uh, up there and networking with those people. And we're coming back on the 29, like uh, uh, that's Friday. We're coming back here because we're going to have several talks and a lot of more in deep and more exchange and more uh, with uh, other developers and more kind of not so much frontal talks. It, it will be more like panels and discussions. Okay. I see you're very. So we'll be back here. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, my friend. Great. <laughs> yeah, good. Let's do it right. <laughs> Okay, um, since there are no further questions, is this the last talk for today? I think so. Okay. So I can uh, start rapping now. <laughs> oh, no, I can just beatbox. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so this is it. That's it. This is uh, day one. We would have another slot for you if you want. Slot for you. Uh, if you wanted to uh, have a talk, you can hand uh, the presentation papers uh, to me. Or to Carsten back there. Uh, we do have um, some free space tomorrow too. So please go ahead, don't hesitate. If you have a cool idea, some kink you want to present, um, just be very emotional about it and intelligent and beautiful, just like Lynx always is. Be on time, be on time to present. And um, the Chaos West stage team will be more than happy to, to make this possible to you. I thank. Um, The team at the back, this is uh, Zach and uh, Karsten and Voigt and uh, Michi and all the other people. <laughs> and the next thing up is at midnight, the Klangteppich will have DJs here playing amazing sound. We'll, we'll make some more atmospheric uh, stuff and then we can hang out and have a good time as we always do on the Congress. Excellent. Stay tuned. <laughs> Bye.